Should I buy a Mercedes that was run on waste vegetable oil in the past? Max sent me a great question today. Max is one of our Patreon members. He was looking at a 240D for sale in California that was uh, basically basically died, quit running because of waste vegetable oil. And so this is a good question because uh, we're going to have to deal with this problem going forward. So uh, here's here's my two cents. First of all, if you're looking at a Mercedes that has been run on waste vegetable oil, and is still running but is not running well or has been run in waste vegetable oil and is no longer running, then you're going to have a couple of, of issues that you're going to have to resolve. The first issue is how did waste vegetable oil affect the engine? A lot of the time, so much carbon builds up in the valve seats of these cars that they lose compression. And this is actually a problem even with Mercedes that have been sitting for a long time that have not been running waste vegetable oil. You crank a 616, 615, 617 engine over and no compression. Now, why is it that the cars have no compression? Well, it's because carbon gets stuck between the valve seat and the valve itself. And this carbon actually holds the valve open, causing a massive compression leak. When you have a little tiny space like this, where you're at 22 to 1 compression, and all of your compression is basically occurring inside your pre-chamber, which is where it occurs on a diesel engine. All, that's the only area in, in, in one of these engines where everything, where, where there's open space, then you're going to have a big problem. So to get a car like this running, First of all, you want to flush the fuel system completely. You want to get everything out, including pulling the tank. You want to pull the tank and pressure wash the inside of it. You want to flush the fuel lines with brake parts cleaner. I mean, you want to flush the heck out of the car's fuel system. The next thing you need to do is see if your injection pump will carry diesel. So you want to fill the fuel system up after reinstalling your fuel tank and putting new lines on, making sure that your primer pump works. You want to see if you can get fuel to come through every delivery orifice in the car's injection pump. If that doesn't work, pull the injector lines, pull the 15 millimeter delivery orifice nuts, or if you have a European version, pull the splined delivery valves out of the pump, pull the spring, pull the delivery valve element, and then uh, uh, pressurize the injection pump using the primer pump and see if you have diesel oozing out. Clean everything out really good, about as good as you can, and if you have to even pull the primer pump off, the, the, the mechanical lift pump off the side of your main fuel pump and suck out all of the, uh, all of the parts. So we're going to demonstrate with this old injection pump what to do. The delivery valves are removed so that all the elements are out so that fuel can flow freely through here. If you can get the O-rings for them, you can actually pull these plungers out, but do not lose the spacers uh, to, um, uh, between the injection pump delivery valve uh, assembly and the, um, and the body of the pump because each spacer is unique. And you can actually use the spacers to adjust, uh, to adjust delivery pressures. So each spacer has to stay, there are little spacers in here, they have to stay with the pump body. Now. Um, once that's done, once you have fuel flowing out of here, your fuel return check valve is clear, all your lines are clear, you can put your delivery valves back in. But what you want to do is you want to go through here and you want to clean out the pumps. Oil sump using brake parts cleaner. So right here through the primer pump hole, see if there's sludge in the bottom. And believe me, there will be if it's a WVO pump. If you need to get to an even lower point on the pump, you can undo this uh, this plug right here on the side. It actually controls part of the linkage, but you can, you can still remove it and, and kind of flush this bottom part here. Use air pressure to push all the sludge and brake parts cleaner out so that you have a clean pump. Now, once you're done with that, 
you want to go through your injection nozzles. Take them apart, clean them out, reseal the threads, put in new nozzle tips if you need to, replace the heat shields. Anytime you're taking a diesel injection nozzle out, always replace the little heat shield. They cannot be used more than once. And do your best to get any goo out of the, out of the injection delivery lines as well. If the car has been replumbed, plumb everything back to the way it was supposed to be from the factory. Why? Because most of the time the waste vegetable oil cars go down because they die because people plumb the fuel lines wrong. They run them through filters and heaters and more filters and through this and through that and then they finally get to the mechanical lift pump. Doesn't work real good. You need to get rid of that stupid auxiliary VO system bull crap that actually keeps the cars from running well. So once you're done, when you're cranking the car over, if you have carbon on the valve seats, and, and you performed a valve adjustment, pull the valve cover while you are cranking the car over, bonk, bonk, bonk the top of the rocker gently with the hammer when the cam lobe is pointing up. Now, I'm not pointing up, sorry. When the, when, the, when the cam lobe is pointing to the left or right. Now, why is this important? This is important because you want the carbon to fall off into the space below on top of the piston so it can get blown out through the exhaust. But you need to make sure that you have free movement in the valve and the piston is not up at the top of its travel. The piston needs to be down a little bit so you don't smack the valve with the piston. And, and actually when, when you're, I take this back, when your cam lobe is facing straight up, when your intake cam or exhaust cam lobes are facing straight up, this is a safe time to do it because that's not the height of the compression stroke. The height of the compression stroke is right before the intake valve opens. So if your valve lobe is facing here, you don't want it. If it's facing up here, then you're good. Intake lobe um, on each cylinder. So bonk, bonk, bonk with a hammer to shed the carbon. Make sure that you have diesel out of each of the lines and the car should start. Can you, people ask me, can you start it with the valve cover off? Yes, have a friend to actuate the throttle, make them wear some goggles, maybe a face mask, a dirty shirt and gloves because it's gonna spray oil everywhere. But you wanna get this car running. So um, go ahead and, and, and bonk the valves until you get compression back in each cylinder. Bonk, 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 gently, 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 gently. Um, and I'll make a demonstration of this at some point to get that carbon off and then you should be able to get your WVO car running. Now once it's running, you wanna run in fact, I always say when you're putting the filters back on, fill them with power service or diesel clean or redline diesel additive or something similar. You want to run an abnormally high concentration of fuel cleaners, Lubramoly, for example, through the fuel system to get all of that stuff out. You also want to make sure your timing chain is okay and your oil is clean and your cooling system is good because you should probably take the car for a spirited run at over 3,000 RPM for a long time to get the motor clean and you're going to have to keep doing this. If you have to clean out the intake manifold and pull the intake manifold, do that too, you know, but eventually the motor will start to clean up. It'll quit smoking so much and it should regain its compression. We hope. So if you run a car in waste vegetable oil, these are the consequences. If you buy a car in waste vegetable oil, God bless you. <laughs> Very proud of you. Reach out to us and we will help. Let us know in the comments if you've saved any veggie cars from destruction. And um, in the meantime, enjoy driving, working on and maintaining your Mercedes Benz. Tap the bell for notifications. Please like, share, and subscribe. Please consider supporting us on Patreon. And in the meantime, uh, you know, stick with diesel or biodiesel so that you don't have to go through this. Cheers. <laughs>